I'm Willie Oliver. I'm Director of Family Ministries for the General Conference. I'm Elaine Oliver, and I'm Willie's wife. And um, we partner in ministry together. We write, we speak, we train um, directors of family ministries around the world. And uh, we have a television program, Real Family Talk, with Willie and Elaine Oliver. And we help families to maximize the potential that God has given them for mission. Well, you know, churches are made up of families. It would behoove us to play, pay close attention to how we could foster healthier relationships in those families. Because when there is conflict in the family, it makes it a little bit more difficult for families to come to church. And then it makes it a little bit more difficult for the church to do mission. And so that's why we feel that family ministries is just so critical to the mission of the church, because if our families are not strong, how can the church be strong? And so what we realized during the crisis, and particularly in this last, these last 18 months with the pandemic, families are beginning to implode. And we realize, and, and Christian families, Christian homes, and so we realize that many of us have been living on the periphery of family relationships. In other words, we were doing just enough to get by. But something else we realize, we've been living on the periphery of our faith. We've been saying nice things. We've been going out and feeding the homeless but we haven't been living the fruit of the Spirit in our homes. So you often say I like that. to say that when we have strong marriages, we're more likely to have strong families. When we have strong families, we're more likely to have strong churches. When we have strong churches, healthy churches, because we have healthy families, we're more likely to share the gospel with power and joy. And I say to help hasten the coming of Jesus Christ. So it's cyclical, you know, it's an entire structure, uh, model, if you will, of how we uh, position the church, how we position our families, how we position ourselves in society for winsome witness. Uh, after all, the Bible says in John 13, 35, by this they will know that you're my disciples because of your love one for the other. That love is best exemplified when you're getting along when you're kind, when you're patient, then we see the love. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. How do you know you're loving in your family? Because you're patient and you're kind. And those two virtues, those two elements seem to go out the window in times of crisis. I want to appeal to our world membership and to our families around the world, hone in on what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 13 about how we love. Be patient, be kind. If we could just be patient and kind and have that in the front of our minds, on the prefrontal cortex of our brain, as we relate to each other, I guarantee that our families will have the kinds of relationships that will shine forth and people will see Jesus in us. I remember growing up in the church, I'm a pastor's kid, I grew up in the church, can the world see Jesus in you? This needs to be the mantra of Seventh-day Adventist families around the world. We're talking about, I will go. What are you going for unless the world can see Jesus in you? In family ministries, we call it, I will go with my family. We want the entire family to be mission focused. That's what all our Adventist families around the world should be. How can the world see Jesus through me today, through our family relationships? And we can only do that if the Spirit of Christ is in us so that we can produce the fruit of the Spirit. And only when we have that Spirit in us can we be patient and kind. So when we have strong families, even in times of crisis, we're able to minister through the storm. We always say to people, especially people of faith, but even people who are not proclaiming faith, that prayer and meditation, and we're talking about meditating on God's Word, is the first place we want to begin. You know, God says, call on me. Right. You know, He says, cast your cares on me. So when we're going through something, 
why not turn to the one who says he can give us peace, to the one who says he can heal us, to the one who says he cares about us. Ellen White says, where angels love to dwell. She says, make your home a little piece of heaven on earth. That's what we're proposing to our membership around the world. Make your home a little heaven on earth. And you're not doing it on your own because we can't do it on, on our own. But with God, all things are possible. Claim that, have family worship every day. Speak to the Lord, uh, invite him into your homes, into your hearts, and then pick a fruit each day. The fruit of love, the fruit of joy, the fruit of peace, the fruit of patience. If we operationalize that in our family relationships every day, then even through the storm of COVID-19, through this pandemic, through these pressures, uh, through this tension in the home, the Spirit of Christ in us will come shining through if we surrender every day to Him, to His power, to the indwelling of His Spirit, so that we can shine for Jesus, so that mission may continue during this time of crisis.